This week is the exams. So we have uh, part one, part two due this week. Uh, and for that, you will definitely want uh, to have your note sheet. So let me show you my note sheet again that I have made throughout this unit as we've been working through module eight. Uh, I had my notes that I've showed you before. All the formulas that we learned during module eight. I had the volumes of the cylinder pyramid cone, the sphere, uh, the density down here. You need that density. This is just some things you're reminding what the area of a rectangle is. Um, volume prism, circumference, area of a circle, those things. These you might need when you do like the base area of a pyramid. What is the base area or a cone or cylinder? You know, the base is the pi times the radius squared. That's the base times the height. Pi times the radius squared. That's the base times the height. The base area of a, a pyramid depends. Is it a square? It's usually a square in, in, in our unit. And so if it's a square, square is a rectangle. Just take the length times the width. You know, you just take one side times another side, and they're the same. So it's really side squared, right? But uh, find the base, take it times the height, times one third, all that good stuff. So for the exam, let me talk about briefly, I'll talk about part one. Um, you also have the video where I work the entire practice test, and that's a good preview for a lot of uh, part one. Yeah. But just briefly, well, let me tell you what it'd be. Uh, there might be some here, my other note sheet cross sections. I yeah, made little okay. notes. Just I took these from the reviews at the end of the of the okay. lessons. Uh, what shapes that they make when you take a cross section of these. Uh, also, the net drawings and the rotation of the 2D objects, right? Because rectangles, triangles, semicircles, those are two dimensional, right? It's just a two dimensional. So when you rotate it, we create a three, three dimensions, sphere, cone, cylinder. Those are all three dimensional things, right? They have uh, three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, if we were looking at it on a on coordinate plane, actually. So uh, for uh, test one, you'll have um, problems that certainly use these formulas. It'll give you some dimensions and say, what is the volume of the cylinder? Uh, what's the volume of this pyramid? What's the volume of the cone? All right, so it will have you do that. Uh, generally in Buzz, it'll tell you when you need to use 3.14 for pi instead of the pi button because when the multiple choice questions, they've used the 3.14. So to match their answer exactly, you would also need to do that. So when it tells you that, just use that. If it doesn't say that when you're working on anything, Delta Math especially, if it does not say use 3.14, you want to use the pi button on your calculator because it will give you a little bit different answer because it's not rounded so severely. Uh, let's see. I may give you a problem where I'll give you the volume of one of these and ask you for what's the radius or what's the length of one side of the period where you have to work backwards. So we may have problems like that in there. Um, oh, yeah, there's a problem where you have uh, like a cylinder in cylindrical base of a, you have a cylindrical vase, pardon me, a vase. It has some marbles in the bottom and it'll say, how much water can you put in there? And it'll tell you the dimensions of the cylinder and the dimensions of the marbles. So you got to find the volume of the cylinder that the vase is, and then subtract the volume of all the marbles because that will take place that water can't be in. So once you take the cylinder, subtract all the marbles, you'll, You'll know how to do that. So it's going to ask you how to do that. Um, it'll have like a grain silo question, perhaps, where it's got the grain silo with the funnel at the bottom. So you have a cylinder and a funnel. So you got to deal with what formulas would you use to calculate that. Um, oh, it does have one I like that's a little bit different. You got to think about it where it'll have like a cylinder. And they'll say, so you got this cylinder. And they want to know what's the volume of it. But it says the wall, like it may tell you that the whole cylinder is like, you know, five feet or something. But it'll say that the wall Unit two. inside is, you know, a foot thick or something. Seven. This is one foot. Yeah. So how much will it hold? Seven. Well, the thickness of the walls will change your radius. Change the diameter, change the radius. 
So you got to pay attention to that. So you're using the right number for the radius because the radius would only be that part. You can't count the wall. The wall takes takes some of that. So that's uh, just make you think. Make sure you're understanding how volume is, not just a bunch of numbers into volume. Understand the numbers you're using. Uh, and like I said, the density, there's some density problems uh, to where you are given, um, you might be given the mass and the volume and ask for density. You might be given the density and the volume and find the mass, or the density and the mass find the volume. So you got to be able to rearrange that equation as needed to be able to solve for any one of those three variables. Uh, there's also a problem on uh, the rotations. There's definitely a problem on that uh, where it's what's going to give you is going to give you some coordinate points and just give you some points. And when you put those on a graph, you got to figure out what shape that makes. And then when you rotate that shape, which one of these do you end up with? So extra step in there. First, it doesn't tell you it's a rectangle. It's a triangle. It's a seven. It doesn't tell you that. It gives you coordinate points. And you got to figure out what shape it is, then figure out. If I rotate it, what's it going to be? So that is a little bit different, just to make sure you're thinking through all of that. Uh, but that's kind of the, the part one, those type of problems, primarily dealing with all of these formulas here, uh, including the density. And like I said, there's going to be like one question of the rotations. But let me talk a little bit more about part two, because that's where a lot of time I see struggling, where I see uh, students struggle with part two for whatever reason. And uh, it, it is, you got to know more what you're doing because it's not multiple choice, right? Part two is not multiple choice. So it was four problems this time. Uh, one, two, three, four. And the first problem will ask you about one of these volumes. And it will say, uh, describe the process for calculating the volume of a cylinder or a pyramid, or a cone, or something. It'll ask you about one of those. And just describe the process. So you have to tell how you would find the volume. Well, let's see. If I had to find the volume of a sphere, I would first need to identify what the radius is. Right? If I have the diameter, I'd have to cut it in half. I have to find out what the radius is. I will take that to the third power, or cube the radius. Then I have to multiply that times pi, and I have to multiply that by four-thirds. And then that would give me the volume. That's all you have to do. Just tell the process. You don't have to calculate anything because they're not giving you any actual shape. They're not giving you any dimensions. So you don't have to do that. If you want to make up your own dimensions and give that as an example in there, that's fine. It's not necessary. You just But make sure you're describing how you find the volume. So that's the first problem. It'll be some kind of how. It'll be a how problem. One of the volumes that we're working with, a how. Uh, the second problem will give you two shapes. Let's say maybe you've got uh, this cone and another cone, right? So it'll say, okay, the first cone, and it may tell you the, the, the radius. Uh, radius equal 8, height equals 10. And then they'll say there's another cone that has a volume of 880. How much bigger is the volume of this than this. You're going to have to figure out what the volume is on this one. This one, you already know the volume. And let's say we did all this math, blah, 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 and we ended up with 440. And then we said that our volume is 440. It's probably not. I just made these numbers up. But let's say, for example, 440, you'd say, oh, well, 880 divided by 440 is 2. So it is twice as big. Two times as big. Right? Don't make it harder than that. Find what your volume is and find out how much bigger the other one is. In this case, this one's twice as big. So that's going to be the second problem. The third problem will be uh, a density, but they're twisting a little bit and make it population density. Okay, so that's just the twist on it. Instead of the mass, you have the population. Right? So it's really the, the population density. I'm going to put PD is the population divided by the area instead of the volume. Area, because it's like, how big is the land? You know, there are all the people are in. How much population is in a land area? So it's really the volume of the land. How many 
acres or square kilometers or whatever they're giving you is it and population is number of people so it'll give you a uh, this one will give you a table right it'll give you a a country here and then a population and then how big the country is and it'll ask you which one has the largest population density which one has the lowest population density so you just have to figure it out the population divided by the area gives you the population density if there are four people in one kilometer then you have uh four people per square kilometer right because you just four people for each square kilometer because there's four people in there if you have 10 people and you have five kilometers right right five square kilometers then you have two people per square kilometer you know it's it, you just divide that and then you can figure out which number is bigger well the other one the four was bigger than the two so the first one has a higher population due to the second one has a lower population so that's going to be the third problem dealing with three different countries and figured out their population densities. The last problem you'll have. Um, oh, it will give you. I may have said that in the first one. This one is the one that will give you the coordinates. It will give you a coordinates ABC or ABCD and say this is at zero zero this is at four two etc give you those and say what shape will that be and if you rotate it that's on the that's on the part two what shape is this and if i rotate it around the y-axis what three-dimensional shape will it prove so that is from this information All right so that is the last question in part two so be able to do that uh, that is that is it as far as looking at what you're looking at in the test. Uh, let me go back and see if there's anything else I missed on part one. Again, uh, volume, volume, comparing volume of two different shapes that are the same shape, same cylinders or same pyramids, whatever. Uh, the base with the marbles, like a grain silo with a cylinder and, and a cone at the bottom. Uh, the other cylinder of a pipe with wall thickness uh, density uh, density density problem and then the the multiple choice will actually show you a shape and ask you if it was rotated but so that one the part two actually gives you coordinates where it doesn't show you the shape you got to figure out what shape it is with the coordinates part one will have a question where they just give a graph and they'll show you a shape right? it'll put the shape on there and say they rotate it's not going to be a, a three right? so it'll say like oh, if this is a if this is a rectangle or if this is a right triangle what shape is it going to be right so it'll actually have the shape part two will just give you the coordinates so it's a it's just a little bit more deeper thinking on part two but that is a good rundown of what this week is that is the test that is what is needed uh to know to be able to do well so if you didn't do well in the practice test Go back, make sure you've watched my video on the practice test that so that you understand what you did wrong because you can see because I'll explain exactly how I did all of those. And so make sure you're watching that and go back and take the practice test until you feel comfortable, right? That's why the practice test allows multiple retakes and doesn't count against you in your grade because you can take it as many times as you need to until you feel that you are ready to take the exam, then jump into taking the test because you only get one shot at the test you can't take it over and over and over again. Uh, I do allow retakes. You just got to get with me first, and I have to uh, set that up because it doesn't automatically allow retakes on the test. But you can take the practice test until you feel ready. So if you have any questions on that, let me know. Any of this that you question popped in your mind while I was going over it, uh, I'll be happy to answer that. Otherwise, uh, at this point, if your grade is over 70 percent then you are free to go you're not required to stay in class if it's below then you need to have another tab open uh, with buzz and be working on whatever you need to work on if you are not caught up if you're not current uh, work on that and get caught up with whatever you need to if you are current then you can start on the test if you feel ready so that's where we stand uh, so yeah if you have questions let me know Otherwise, uh, be working, and I'll be here for any problems or questions you have during class.